Good evening, everyone. It's wine o'clock again here at the Wine Man's. Tonight's wine, it's from Georgia, the former Russian Republic. And this is Tbil Vino, uh, who are the growers. And this is the Saparavi. It's quite an unusual wine from what I've been led to believe. And I've been told a little bit about it. And I'm going to tell you about it and we're going to taste it because this is a new one for me. Never tried a Georgian wine in my life. I should be ashamed for that being in the wine trade, but I haven't. I've never really had an interest in it. Not many people have ever asked me about it, even though they've been making wines there since around 6000 BC. This is one of the oldest wine producing countries in the world, and they know what they're doing and they know how to do it. So I'm ashamed. But tonight, all of that changes because I am going to taste this particular wine. So Saparavi which is the grape varietal, is the most famous varietal in Georgia. And it is it basically translates to uh, the word dye. And the reason for that is because this particular grape is a tenturi grape. And what does that mean? Hmm, big word. It basically, whenever you get a grape and you have the dark skin, the pulp inside is often clear. But the Saparavi grape, the difference with this is it's actually got some colour going through it. So it's used an awful lot to add colour to individual wines. And that's what gives it generally such a very, very dark colour in terms of the look in the glass. So let's take a look at it. So as you can see, very dark, really purpley. It's almost reminiscent of like a really deep Malbec, but it, it's, 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 it's got a different purple hue. It's more like a, um, a blood red hue to it, whereas Malbec is, is very, very purpley. Uh, but this, this one is really, really interesting. So the nose straight away, okay. It's got this sweet fruit sort of characteristic. It's got like red currants and raspberries and almost strawberries as well. And there's a hint of oak, just a hint, because they take 30% of the juice. And it is, it's matured with malolactic fermentation, um, where they turn the malic acid into lactic acid, softens the wine an awful lot more. Then they take that 30% and they put it in French oak casks, just to allow it to, you know, just luxuriate in the oak and absorb some of the flavours. But you don't want too many flavours, that's why it's only 30%. Mmm. Mmm. Well, that surprised me. Okay, the tannins are there. They're very, very firm. They're quite dry, but they go. It's gone now. And now the, the, the fruit flavours are coming in. I mean, it's, it's a medium to full-bodied red, but it's light and it's soft at the same time. It's a really interesting style of wine. I mean, it kicks in at, what is it? Can't actually see because the back of the label scrubbed off, but I'm going to guess it's about 13%. Um, but really, really good. I'm, I'm, I think this would be, because it's got that sweetness, it's going to work really well with some hefty sort of meat, some things like venison and, and grouse and pheasant and things like that. Perfect for this time of year where you want something... Um, you want something that's big and bold, but not too heavy and not overpowering. So I think this is a lovely wine. I might actually consider putting this on my website, but I just wanted to give you a review of it for a first time wine for me. Cheers.